testing, 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 and testing some more. Okay, according to Twitch, we are now live uh, from not New York, and it is not Saturday night. Um, okay, so last time we were doing this, uh, last time we were um, streaming, uh, we were looking at this um, uh, umbral cones. We'll continue to do that now. Uh, the problem we were having, though, is the umbral cone seemed to be on the wrong side of the uh, Earth-Moon Sun, and we were going to investigate that uh, because the usually the um, the uh, the shadow of the moon is going to fall pretty close to Earth. Um, that is the shadow that goes from the sun through the moon and terminates in a point. The the umbral cone is going to be pretty close to Earth, and it's not going to be anywhere. Um, uh, let's see where the uh, where it is here. Actually, that's not too far away, but it shouldn't be like 293 million, uh, 293 million kilometers away, which is what we're measuring it to be right now. So if we go back over here, <coughs> uh, we're trying to figure out what's causing that. It could be that our formulas are bad to begin with, um, and and if that's the case, there there's ways to fix this because we do have a a mathics slash mathematical background calculations we did to come up with all of this stuff. Uh, so let's see, let's just see what's going on here now. We have the, um, the umbral point, UD, appears to be over here. Um, and that is actually only 27 million, uh, even though, because this is 293 million, this is 27 million, um, minus one, blah, blah, blah. So if you're going starting from the sun, going at 696, no, sorry, it's the sun radius, my bad. If you're going from the sun, which is over here, minus 106, blah, 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 and you're going through the moon in terms of x-coordinates, you would expect the, uh, the, um, the UD parameter to be sort of, uh, well, actually, it would be going upwards, because um, that, actually, that number might actually be okay. Hmm. Let's see, start at the sun, no, sorry, we're going down. We're going way down to minus 27 million from minus um, 1 million. So you would expect this number here to be, you know, the uh, negative 27 million something. And I think I know what's wrong here, so we go back to the original um, Mathics, um, the original Mathics, um, I think I made an assumption that's not true. So why don't we go ahead and do that, uh, if we can find it. And I'm going to just cheat here, go, ah, okay. Switch into the buffers here and just say, there's only one thing that ends in, no, actually there's two, isn't there? There's the playground also. Okay, hang on. A little bit too busy here. Okay, so we're just going to do this. Okay, I think it was just playground, not mathics, so that's actually fairly easy. And I think the, the problem we had here is we computed the line of intersection as being either SR over SR plus TR or SR over SR minus TR. Um, and because the line starts at S and goes to T, um, we need to make sure that the uh, value that we're looking at is bigger than is bigger than one. In other words, it's past the the second object, which is t. We'll take a look at that real quick now. I'm going to say mathx persist. Okay, do this. All right. So, so the line that we've drawn starts at s, ends at t, and so we want the terminal point that occurs beyond one. And I guess the um, the kind of issue I, I wasn't really seeing here is that really should be SR over SR minus TR, um, because TR is smaller than SR, so that's going to be SR over number, um, no, yeah, that, that should be, let's see, hang on. Oh, I might have gotten this backwards. Okay. So if TR is zero, these are both one, uh, which is fine, but if TR is, uh, bigger than zero, uh, SR minus TR is going to be less than, um, SR minus TR is going to be uh, less than SR, and SR over number less than itself 
is going to be bigger than 1. So this does seem like the one we want. Um, and we can certainly plug in the points we have. We can certainly run the program again and see what's going on in terms of the points. Uh, but let's see here. So we have T2. That's this point. Line of T2. And this, uh, this point should be, and this is the point we used, the, the cone point. And this point should actually be, um, you know, uh, further down the line, which means if you start with S and go to T, it should be continuing in, the direction, in that same direction. Uh, so let's see what went wrong here. So let's go ahead and actually bring up another screen by doing Control-V, Control-C. And let's go ahead and run bin playground. Okay, so the Earth is actually not part of it here. Um, so SX, SY, SZ, SR equals, and this is going to be the Sun's coordinates basically, and it's a radius, which is actually quite tiny. Um, I don't know how well mathematically the math fix is going to handle this, but so this is the XYZ coordinates of the Sun, and the solar radius is this. And if we don't get the same answer here, obviously we know something is wrong. Uh, T in this case, the, the accepting object is the moon. Uh, we're casting from the sun to the moon. So the moon's position here is this. And these positions are relative to the Barry Center. Uh, I'll, although I don't think that's important. Um, and the moon's radius is pretty constant, 1737.4. And again, because we're not actually, um, we're not looking at Q right now, we don't actually need to worry about the rest of this. So let's go ahead and run it like this and see what happens. So, okay. Um, so line of zero is going to be the sun. Line of one is going to be the moon. Okay, so far so good. Um, SR, TR. So SR over SR minus TR. Bigger than one as we expected. Um, so the line at this point here should be uh, very, very close to where the, the T is. So this is... Um, so this should be right here, UD, okay, so something is wrong here. Let me quickly check what SR over SR plus TR is, because maybe that's what we're getting, although even that seems a little bit off right now, because even that's going to be pretty close to, um, to 1. So let's take a look here. So it's quite possible that I screwed up the formula in playground.c. Um, so cone point is what, we, what we're what we looking for. And so we, this is obviously not formulaic, but um, so let's take a look at here to see how I computed um, uh, the uh, cone point. Maybe I did it incorrectly. Um, y okay, this is actually hard to tell whether I did or didn't. So let's go ahead and get rid of the um, the numbers, and let's just see what happens in purely symbolic values if we do this. So, dun dun. So the cone point, SRTX, and we did have to make a few changes because uh, we didn't have TX, TY, all that good stuff. Um, SR minus T, and I did think if I, I think I was able to simplify this quite a bit uh, to this. Uh, so all of these will end with SR minus TR, which is good. And then it's basically going to be SR TX TY uh, times SX TR. Yeah, this, this looks okay, actually. Um, so the umbral point is apparently not being returned correctly is the issue. Um, 
and I don't know why that is. Okay. Uh, SR minus TR is always going to be a positive number. Um, let's see. All right. So over here we're saying the cone point is this sucker. Uh, and over here we're saying that it's actually very close to the moon, which is a big negative number. Uh, and it's almost like we're off by a sign there. In fact, let me see if I can show that we're exactly, if we can show that we're exactly off by a sign error, that's a lot better than showing that we're approximately off by a sign error. Let's go ahead and use these values. And I'm hoping that, uh, hoping that Mathix has high enough precision to deal with this. Oh, 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 no, don't want to do that. Hang on. So what am I doing wrong here? Um, oh, yeah, I want to get rid of this as well. All right, so let's go ahead and use the values again. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get this to a little bit of a higher uh, resolution here, like 20. Oh, I cannot. Um, okay. So UD here is... It looks like exactly the negative of what we have. So, so there is a temptation just to multiply everything by negative one and see if that works. Um, yeah, and um, and that would just suggest that I somehow messed up this. Um, I wonder if this minus SR is supposed to be here. It's supposed to be the other way around. Um, yeah, now I'm kind of worried that I think maybe I, I entered the formula in the negative sense. I'd like to get a confirmation of, of that instead of just sort of putting everything to the negative right away. Okay. Um, SRTX, huh, that is a minus, plus SXTR, uh, and it's possible but unlikely that the simplification broke something. Um, so let's try this. Let's go ahead and multiply the whole thing by SR minus TR before simplification, then simplify. Uh, so the uh, minus SR does start all three of them, and the positive one is always with TR. So, well, let's slap a negative sign in front of all of these, and if it works, um, no, we'll just pretend like that's the one thing we wanted in the first place. Yes, that's how we work. That, that's how we roll. Uh, let's go ahead and go to BC get Astro. Make, make something. Oh, we can't even do that. Uh, tell the bin play Let's see if we got updated. It did. Okay, so now the UD is much closer to um, to what we want it to be. It's, um, and its distance from Earth is only 370,000 kilometers, which is much more correct. Um, so now, let me go ahead and BC get, let me go ahead and save that to, to get, since it is important. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sort of do a little bit of a loop here. And by here I mean in playground.c. Uh, we're going to see, um, so this um, ET equals zero is uh, the beginning of the year 2000. Uh, so we can do all of this stuff. Um, we'll date, um, we don't necessarily have to print it all, but uh, let's go ahead and do this inside of a loop. Uh, and we will sort of see uh, when the Earth is closest to the focal point. 
and if it's uh, supposedly, if it's really, really close, uh, less than the Earth's radius, we will have an eclipse. That's not the only way we can have an eclipse, but we are still in the first testing stages. Okay, so we'll say for, um, do we have I defined here? I, I think we can actually do this, right? We can say int I equals zero, I less than 366, I plus plus, ET equals I times it, because it's in seconds, we want this. Um, do all of this good stuff. Um, don't print any of this. Yeah, we probably need to keep our prints together. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's put the prints down here. Someday my prints will come. <laughs> Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, because I need to... Um, okay. Okay, good. And so now we have a nice little for loop. Um, we will kind of want to print something here, um, but most of the stuff we want. We want to print the day and the uh, distance from the umbra. And um, usually the number will become lowest on the full moon. So this will be that. And if we've done it correctly, oh, we didn't like it. Didn't like it. Something's wrong. Um, error in function mean invalid the type of argument 49 well, it's not a um, it's a comment structure dude wow I, I used the Mathematica comment structure instead of the um, instead of the C comment structure I have the brains of a doofus. I think Pascal also uses that style, but that doesn't mean I'm less of a doofus. All right. Um, unused variable, that's fine. We, we always have that. Okay. All right, so let's see. Um, now, in theory, I could just sort this by by this uh, third, third uh, number. But let's see, uh, so according to this, um, January 6th-ish would have been a new moon. Um, year 2000 moon phase calendar. Aren't they clever? Um, let's take a look here. January 6th, 11, 14 a.m. So yes, we are we are getting, um, w it is doing kind of what we expect it to do. Uh, the new moon will have it. So now let's go ahead and do this. Uh, that's the third column. And we want the smallest value first. So no, that's not what I meant to do at all. I meant to do this. So the 241st day would be... Um, There's a clever way to do this. Cal minus J of 2000 will tell us the um, which day is which. So 241st day is going to be August the 28th-ish. And if there was a solar eclipse, then we're in good shape. Hmm. Hmm. It's not good. August the uh, twenty something. I said, yeah, we don't have that. Um, okay. Um, so that's when the day two forty one. Um, now, of course, even that is not quite touching the Earth's surface. It's theoretically possible that the actual angle between the uh, the moon, sun, and earth is not quite right. So let's see if day 153 gives us anything better. Day 153 would be June the 1st. And, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Eh, that's not looking good. Because July the 1st there is one. June the 1st, 
There does not appear to be one. Um, the 35th day of the year, which is going to be February 4th, uh, and there is a partial solar eclipse then. So that, that's, that's one of them. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. And the ones at the ends here, like 197, 167, 168, these should all be close to the full moon. So 197 is, and I'm pretty confident this is going to be true. In fact, these might be, um, I don't think there's going to be lunar eclipses necessarily, but um, let's see. So July, second week of July, 16th total lunar eclipse. Okay, so we're somewhat confident that these numbers are like vaguely correct, but we're still not actually looking at, uh, we're still not actually looking at the angle between the cone point and uh, the the earth or whatever it was that we're looking for so that's that's this is um, an indication that we have something that's not horribly wrong and uh, I, I am bugged by the negative sign so I'm going to put a little note here that says why do I need negative sign here and it's possible also that this, I mean, it, it could be any one of a million things. Okay, so now, um, we, now we need to figure out, this is, the, this is good stuff, this is the umbral data. Now we need to figure out whether a given planet is within a certain amount of degrees of, of an umbra, meaning the umbral point and the umbral cone. So previously, um, we had done this. And it turns out this is wrong. It turns out this is not at all what we need, uh, because this black line here is the uh, umbral cone but it actually doesn't matter to us because uh, what we're looking for, I'm going to simplify this diagram now, what we're looking for has nothing to do with the umbral cone so I guess I need to put some values back in here um, and I'm pretty sure I can't do what I just did here, oh actually hang on um, was this Mathex? No, it's BC, BC Eclipse um, portions dot mathix. So here we go. Uh, like I said, we have all these lovely points here. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, line drawing point. Okay. So we don't actually need the. What we're actually trying to figure out is we know. We know the blue angle. I, do we need the green angle? We do need the green angle. And we're trying to find out what the green angle is. And because this is a tangent to this, uh, this and this are perpendicular. Because it's a radius and a tangent to the radius are going to be perpendicular to each other. We don't need the black line, so anything that's in black I think we can get rid of. And just because of the way we did this, the stuff in black is the stuff that comes right at first. So let's see if that helps. Um, that was remarkably good. Okay, so we know the blue angle because that's the angle between the um, the uh, vector and the. Uh, that's an easy to figure out. That's an easy to figure out angle. Uh, that's just going to be the. Uh, let's see. The angle from the cone point. The the. Uh, the umbral cone point here here that we know that vector and we know the vector of the umbral cone point and it doesn't matter how far we go because we just want the angle. Uh, so the, the, the issue here is getting the green angle or actually I think more correctly here is the angular diameter of uh, the angular radius rather of the object we're looking at from the cone point and that I think is pretty easy to see um, opposite over hypotenuse so it's the arc sine of r over the distance to the planet. Uh, that's going to be that extra, that's going to be the angle that we need there. Um, so that'll tell us whether or not any points on the planet are being hit by the umbral cone. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, somehow incorporate that. Um, so that'll be, that'll be target planet minus umbral cone. That's the vector from there. All right, we need the umbral angle. That's just to tell us how wide the umbra is to begin with. And let's get the angular diameter here. That shouldn't be 
I think we can actually just sort of stick that into the main uh, playground.c. We might want to create a function out of it later, of course. All right, so here, um, so dist is actually the vector that goes from the Earth to the umbral point. It's in, in our case, this is the um, it's the blue vector. Um, and we know the Earth's radius, so the so I think we can just say spice double uh, Earth angular radius equals a sine of that's the Earth's radius, which we decided is er um, over the uh, v norm of dist, which is this. Okay. And so we actually, the other thing we sort of want here, I think, is, well, actually, we don't want the uh, end dist at all. We want the actual, the, the angle. Um, the umbral angle, which will be a bang. And what we want to compare that to is the angle of, um, so we need the angle between the Earth and the, uh, and the, um, between the Earth, the dist vector, and the vector that's unvect is the vector we need it from. And I think that is, um, And I think that is actually just going to be vector angle. Um, and I think I have a function written for that, actually. Um, let's see, v sub da da da. Uh, vector angle. Do I, see, do I mean angle vector? No. I think vector angle is actually one of their functions. Vector angle. OK. Is it vec angle? Uh, we're going to find it. It's not hard to find. Um, angle. That's the time derivative of it. Phase angle search. Illumination angle. Matrix to unix phase angle between two body centers. Um, state transformation. Okay. I think it's going to be something SEP. Um, okay, that we're getting close. That's the separation search. VSEP C. And I'm 99% sure I've used it somewhere here anyway. Or here. Yeah, there it is. And VSEP C does return uh, a double, it appears. So we don't have to worry about... Uh, about that. So it, we don't have to uh, encapsulate it in something. Um, that's going to be V sub C of the vector between um, the dist vector between the Earth and the uh, and between the umbral cone and Earth and the vector vector which is just going to be unvect by definition. And let's see what this does. And I guess we should probably print out oh, we should probably leave a place for that. And we should print out the day number just so we have a little bit of uh, something going on here, so we know what day it is. Uh, and actually, the more I think about it, this should be... Yeah, because this is actually makes it... No, that's actually... Okay. That's the beginning of day, zero, of day one, so we're off by like a one day or something. I don't care too much about that. Um, so the umbral angle... And at some point, we're going to add some of these together, but let's just see what this is. And just because I'm feeling feisty, I'm going to, um, these are in radians, but I want them in degrees. So I think rad to deck is what I defined. New no. radians. Oh, wow, I never convert. OK. Um, Yeah, I guess if we need to multiply, we'll just do it ourselves. Let's take a look at what this does here. And let's just see what we're getting. 
Um, something tells me that didn't compile. Invalid operations to binary spice double spice double star what we're meaning why am I doing that? Something is very wrong. Um, I'm trying to divide two things that are ER Okay, hang on. Forty six twenty eight A sign Spice double ER is a spice double star? Really? Um Oh, right, right. Because <laughs> it's a vector, we need we just are gonna just use the first component of the vector as the actual as the actual uh as the actual radius. We're gonna pretend that's the radius. Okay. So Let's see what the uh, the uh, second variable here is the between the pointer to the Earth and the pointer to the umbral vector uh, and the umbral vector. The smaller that number, the closer we are to an eclipse. Um, so it looks like on the twentieth day uh, we are very close to a. Mm, there's something that seems wrong about this. On the twentieth day, we're very close to a uh, an eclipse. Uh, let's see if that's actually true. Um, well, it would be a full moon. I mean, very, very close to one. Uh, in fact, January twenty first, there was a total lunar eclipse. Uh, but I sense something is still wrong here because we are um, we're supposed to be looking for solar eclipses right now. So uh, the uh, Umbral vector between so the umbral vector cone of the umbra is going to lie still should be lying on the moon side of the Earth because um, although we're 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 in January so it's the other side of the Earth but it still should be uh, that the uh, that the umbral vector is between Earth and um, and the moon. And so the um, that vector should be, I guess it can be that small, um, but this should mean, and I think maybe I've got something messed up here. So I want the um, vector from Earth, vector from the umbral cone to Earth. Let's go back to our diagram here. The vector from the umbral cone to Earth um, No, I'm looking for something else actually um, So we have, this is the one that we're, we don't really need um, So yeah, I do need this blue angle and then I need to know what the actual um, the umbral angle is and I can actually add up to the angular diameter of Earth on top of this so, and that means there should be a, um, means there should be a solar eclipse. So I'm kind of confused as to what's going on here. So let me think. And so I think the last one is just the um, Earth's angular diameter, right? Um, yeah, Earth angular radius, rather. Uh, so really, if we have the umbral angle plus the Earth radius is bigger than this number, we should have a solar eclipse. So if this plus this exceeds the middle one, we should have a solar eclipse. And I think that does not happen here on the 20th but if it did that should have been a that would be a uh, a solar eclipse of the earth okay here again on the 49th day we have um, 
a very low number. And the 49th day is going to be the 16th of February. Now, 49 minus 31, the 18th of February. It's full moon. Again, that looks like it's going to be a lunar eclipse, not a solar eclipse. So I am, I am a little bit confused as to what's going on. I am tempted to put the whole thing into uh, Mathix as is, although this is a very, very long uh, vector. So I'm not sure how... Uh, how how good this would be. Um, so I mean, it does look like we're kind of nailing the um, the lunar eclipses here when we need to be doing the solar eclipses. Uh, hello again. Hello, I remember you. I helped you out earlier, I believe. This is X Rick Ardo Two X, uh, and welcome to chat, sir. And there appear to be a couple other people here, but um, not that many. So I hope I didn't miss you. But if you're there, uh, say hello. I hope I didn't uh, didn't you didn't come and go. Um, okay. So, hope, oh, here we are. Yes, yes, I was here yesterday. Yes, I do remember you. And I think I helped you with checkers a few days ago, uh, and unless I'm confusing you with someone else. Uh, good, I'm glad you're here. Great to see it. And today, and oh, that's right. In fact, not only that, you actually helped me yesterday. You're the one who figured this whole thing out yesterday. You're the one who figured out that I needed to do um, angle manipulation instead of... Uh, Instead of looking at, uh, instead of doing something weird, I should be looking at the angles between the umbral cone and the uh, and the planet in question, and looking at the width of the umbral cone, and good stuff like that. So uh, yes, now I definitely remember you. You did help a bit. You helped a lot. Xric, X R I C A R D O two X. That's the name. Burnt into your memory. Everyone, go watch him now. I, I, I don't know if he's even streaming now. Probably not, because he's talking to me. But uh, yeah, so now you can help me figure out why this isn't working. Um, oh, I, he doesn't stream, by the way, so you can't watch him. But still, admire him and be nice to him, because I said so. Um, all right, what's the problem? Let's go ahead and go into a little bit of a more of a debugging mode here. Um, so I will go ahead and print all of this stuff out now. Um, and the other thing I'm going to print on top of all this is day, that's going to be percent D. This is the day of the year uh, 2000, roughly speaking. We're starting with ET equals zero, which is the J2000 epoch. And we're going 366 days into the future, which is through the year 2000. So the problem, um, Let's take a look here. So we happen to know that there is a solar eclipse, no, sorry, a solar eclipse on the 36th -ish day of the year, a partial solar eclipse. So uh, what we're looking for now is, should be uh, when that, you know, we should be see seeing that so the solar eclipse on the 36th day. I can't talk, but, you know, other than that. All right, so let's see what happens here. Um, and so we'll look for, oh, come on, I forgot to put new lines in there. Hang on, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. First, we need a new line here. And second of all, I think we'd use a new line just at the beginning of this whole thing. So let's do this again. Okay, so day, this is just roughly speaking. This is not, this is not actually the, um, the whole thing. So the position of the moon is this. And over here is just the length of this vector, which isn't really useful. It just tells us that the moon is about 150 million kilometers from the sun. Position of the sun, position of the earth. I'm pretty sure these are correct, and they seem correct. Uh, moon's radius, sun's radius, earth's radius. For the earth, we're going to use the first radius here. We're not going to use the polar radius. None of that's important. So here we have the, um, the umbral. This is the umbral point here. This is where the... Um, if you drew, uh, you know, from the sun through the moon, and it landed, it would land over here. Um, and the umbral vector is just okay. Hang on, let's see. Umbral angle. You do. You already see it. Okay. Cool. Um, the umbral angle is th this is in radians. Um, and so now what I want to do is see how close this is um, 
to the earth. So what I want to do is I want to take the umbral vector and oh I think I got it. The umbral vector, the way I have it going, I have it going from the moon back to the sun. And I'm pretty sure I want it going from the sun to the moon um, because yes, because in this diagram here um, the umbral cone, let's see. Yeah, I think I, the vec this vector is going from the sun to the moon, not from the moon to the sun. So um, I think I can fix that pretty easily. And I need to make sure I update my, um, let's see. Yeah, the vector pointing from, this should be the vector pointing from S to T. Um, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So this should be the vector pointing up the umbral cone, so this would be... Okay. Let's see here. Um... Hmm. Now that should be okay though. And then from Earth, so do I have, I have one of my, th I think I have one thing negative and that's the only problem I'm having here. Um, and that's why my results are going sort of backwards from what I expected. Um, and I need to make a better diagram than this one. So Earth minus umbral point. Uh, that's going to go from the umbral point. Yeah, I'm almost sure I want to go from the umbral point to Earth. Not from the... So this should actually fix it. If it, if it does, that'll be great. So 36, um, that, okay. Um, all right. And then what I need to print out here is also the, um, uh, we have the umbral angle, what do I, what do I need? Um, yeah, I need the, um, how far the, uh, the earth vector is from the umbral vector. Um, let's see what that angle is. Um, and then I might as well print out the earth radius while I'm at it. That you understand this code. Okay, that's great. I don't, uh, uh, but I'm glad you do. Um, I'm happy to understand the, the language at least. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I think I messed something up because the make didn't seem to go through. Let's see what's going on here. Mm, no, it went through. So wait, am I print uh, did I not printing this correctly? UA. No, UA should be printing three values. Not cool. Oh. Yeah, it would be nice if I actually printed them. Okay, so I think this has fixed it. Ah, uh, no, it hasn't. So this this angle is way too. Um, this angle here should be very very small. Um, um, because the problem is right now I'm, I'm trying to get solar eclipses uh, because I'm going from the sun to the moon hitting the Earth. I'm getting lunar eclipses, sun to the Earth hitting the moon. Um, so it's kind of good that I'm getting something, um, but it's uh, but it's bad in the sense that it's not getting what I want. Um, so let's see. I thought about putting this into a uh, Mathematica 3D. Um, sorry, into Mathix and using a 3D graph to look at these. Um, which I'm still tempted to do, actually. 
but I don't know how well it'll perform with these very large numbers that we have here. Um, so, let's see. We're very close. Let's see. The full vector is from the sun to the umbra point. Um, yes, yes. Um, or from the umbra point to the moon. Either one counts. Um, although I think you might have figured it out. It should be from the umbra point to the sun, pointing outwards towards the sun. Uh, or to the moon. It doesn't matter because they're, they're, they're all lined up now. Because the umbra point is necessarily on the line connecting the moon and the sun. But let me see if I've got it backwards somehow. Um, this should not be hard to figure out, actually. Let's see. Um, so moon, sun, earth, moon radius, earth radius, um, 106. Uh, so it's going from the sun to the moon. Um, Now, one thing I didn't want to do, although I c it's very easy to do, is to use, like, fictional known values and see what's, what's going on, um, instead of trying to do real numbers, but let's, let's see what's going on here. No, no, uh, we already figured out the, uh, no, that was, that was really difficult. We looked at that yesterday, the NASA paper, really, really difficult. Um, I, the umbra point I think I've gotten correctly. Uh, it's basically you continue on the line from the sun through the moon uh, until you hit a point where the angular radius of both is exactly equal. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is actually correct. This is the right umbral point. The because um, actually before you came here, came here, we got everything right. But the only thing we need to know now is if that's the umbral point, um, we need to know the angle between. Th from that point, the umbral vector uh, and Earth, and the, and the uh, center of the Earth. Uh, and then we, we can add the Earth's radius uh, to that. But, but from the umbral vector to the center of the, the umbral point to the center of the Earth, as compared to the umbral vector, and I'm, I'm just thinking that somewhere I've made, th I've made a mistake. Because this should be the, the subtraction here. Um, this is a vector subtraction. So the dist vector should be pointing from uh, the umbral point minus Earth. Uh, from the Earth to the umbral point, this is actually the other way around. Although we had it that way and it didn't help. Um, and I think the one thing we need to do, let's see. Considering half the Earth side, well, yes, we're considering the Earth's angular radius because we're going to start with the angle to the center and then plus or minus the uh, the um, the angular uh, the angular radius. Um, we're pretending like the Earth's equatorial radius is its real radius, not its polar radius, but that's a very small difference. And unfortunately, th I don't know how to do it the other way because then we would have to figure out how the Earth is aligned. And that's, that's really difficult, and I'm not going for that level of difficulty. Okay, let me go ahead and actually print out dist as well. I think that's maybe a mistake that I made earlier. Um, and we'll print that out. And then we should be able to... Um, And that'll just be the distance to the... Uh, we don't need this anymore then. Okay. I sense I'm very close, but not quite there. Okay. So the dist vector goes... Let's see. So that takes Earth to... So if you start with the Earth and subtract, that's not correct. Uh, 
Okay. Oh no, this is Earth minus UD, so that is that is correct. Um, so the Earth minus UD, one, three, two, f so this next number, yeah, okay. So this is Earth minus UD, um, and we want to know how this vector, Earth minus UD, compares to, let's see. Um, I may have made an assumption here that the umbral point uh, actually goes past the Earth. Because if it's before the Earth, the vector to the center is, um, yeah, I think that there's something, I think I've made a big mistake here. So let's go back to this real quick. Um, see, because if the center of the umbral vector is right there, well, it actually usually won't be. During a solar eclipse, the umbral point rarely reaches the center of the Earth. If it did, we would have a very large eclipse. Uh, it's usually, um, it's usually inside, it, it could be outside the Earth and just sort of graze, you know, have the cone graze the Earth without the center. But usually, the umbral, uh, the umbral, the umbral cone center is below the surface of the Earth, but not all the way to the center of the Earth. And I think that's where I've made a um, a sort of mistake because I'm trying to find the. Um, I'm assuming this is the correct diagram here, um, and uh, this is um, this is not the correct diagram for this situation. Um, so I think at some point I'm just going to have to draw out the, uh, the, um, the situation we're looking for, whereas basically this point is actually going to be over here, so we're inside the circle of the Earth. Um, and at that point, see I don't know if, the, at that point I don't know if this is a, this is a, this is looking at the angular diameter of the Earth from really, really close to the Earth is correct. It's going to be close to 180 degrees, but that doesn't help us because we're on the wrong side. So, so I think, um, so I think the problem here is the, the what I've done assumes that the, um, the umbral vector is, the umbral cone is, is outside the body. Because once you're inside the body, I think that changes all of your angles. So that's not good. Um, so now the question is, how do I fix that? Or do I fix that? Do I even care? Um, so I think what I want to do here is... Uh, well, you t what, do you have any suggestions as to what to do? and not getting a response yet. Of course, you might be busy, or you might not have any suggestions. Um, my goal here would be, I think, to draw another diagram, this time draw a diagram of the whole situation, uh, which I wanted to do anyway, actually. I think I needed, I wanted to draw another diagram um, to sort of uh, clean things up a little bit. So, so I sort of wanted to draw the diagram of the whole the whole umbral shebang and everything in two dimensions, because that's really where we're going to um, understand it. And I think actually that, okay, you can try to center from the sun to the point. Okay, okay. That's from the, yeah, from the center of the cone to the point. Good. And then what? Uh, 
the, the problem here is it's possible that the umbral are then factor in the earth. Do you have formulas for that? I mean, the problem here is it's quite possible the umbral cone, but not making it like a static thing. Um, gonna need some more help there. It's quite possible that the umbral cone touches the planet, but the center doesn't even touch the planet. We just need like a little bit of it to touch the planet. And I think it is it does make a difference whether you're inside whether the umbral cone hits inside the planet or outside the planet. Um, so keep going. If you've got something, that's great. If not, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a diagram that I kind of wanted to make anyway. Um, but if you have a formula, that's fantastic. If you want, I can push this to Git Hub, and you can edit it on Git. That would work. You can, you're considering the Earth as a static thing where, in all times, the vector from Earth to the point is the same. Um, vector from the Earth to the point... Well, I mean, we're, we're at a specific instant of time. We do these calculations for every instant of time that we're interested in. So we're doing it for like day one, day two. These are all separate. The, the position of the Earth changes each day. So it's like minus this here, minus here, this here. That's actually a surprisingly big move for one day, but that's what it is. Um, and I think I might need to consider the case where um, uh, I think uh, if you had actual code, you can show me. That would be fantastic. If you want me, I can push this to GitHub. You can you can tweak it, and I can pull it back. Um, I do not. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a nice diagram here. We're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and go back over here. And by here, I mean. And let me. Uh, in fact, this is not going to be port. This is just going to be BC Eclipse Diagram. Dot mathics. And let me save it. And then let me go ahead and do this so I don't forget. And so now nothing should happen. Excellent. Okay. I'm just oh okay, brainstorming. Cool. Yeah, let me go ahead and draw this out. I think this is what this is gonna help. So we're gonna say graphics. And we're using 2D graphics, so we can actually use colors. I'm very excited about that. Uh, yellow. And I'm just gonna try to remember how to do all of this. So it's gonna be yellow disk. So we'll have the sun centered at zero, zero with a, um, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll have the sun centered at zero, zero. Yes, I can actually use colors, I'm very excited. And we'll give it a radius of one for right now. Uh, then we will have the moon. And I'm beginning to, dis I wanna see if I can change the background color and I don't, I don't want to mess with it. So the moon is going to be, and yellow is going to look ugly actually, but we'll go ahead and go with it. The moon is going to be red now because I can't make it. And we're going to put the moon at like one comma zero and we'll give it a tiny size of one. And the earth is going to be blue. We're skewing lots of color. Yeah, this is okay. This is in 2Ds. We it can do it. It can handle it in 2D. And we're going to make the earth uh, disk at 1.11 with a um, 0.5. This is this is a first shot. It's not going to work real well. Um, so I don't. I'm pretty sure this is going to not even work at all. But let's see what happens. Oh, shiny. Okay. Not at all what I wanted, but 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 good start. So we want to make the sun smaller. The Earth I can leave the way it is. It doesn't really matter because the Earth's the target. Uh, and I need to move the Earth to a, a, a non-stupid place. And I should have said 1.1, um, x 1.1, this is 0, 
the sun will now be 0.1, this will be 0 0.01, this will be 0 0.05. Um, that doesn't really look balanced for some reason. Okay. I mean, it, it should be. Um, I'm going to move the moon in closer, because this is obviously not to scale. To scale it would just look horrible. Alright, so we're going to move the moon in a little bit closer here. And this is probably going to be too close. Yeah, that is too close. Um, but I think we can work with this. We just need to shrink some stuff down now. When in doubt, divide. Okay, I think <laughs> I think I that was kind of amazing. Um, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to move the Earth a little bit further to the right. Okay, I think I can work with this. Okay, so... Um... There's going to be basically three cases. One is where the umbral shadow is inside the Earth, or two cases. One is where it's inside the Earth, and where it, when it's outside, when it, one where it's outside the Earth. So, and I think I'm going to want to draw inside the Earth, so I'm going to go ahead and make that a circle, not a disk. Um... And I'm wondering if I should make these variables. Okay. So now we want the line going from the sun, uh, which is going to start at 0, 0,05. I'm definitely going to need to give these things some values, uh, some, some variables. And it's going to go to the top of the moon, which is and let's see if that does what I think it does um, that's weird Um, okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. That line's supposed to be tangent to this. So... Okay, this is weird. I, this shouldn't have happened. I was... And then I was thinking, this is going to continue and, and close off, and this is going to continue and close off. But... It removed the color, and you can... <laughs> no, I, I took off the Earth's color on purpose, because uh, I want to draw stuff in it. But what bugs me here is this line should be tangent to both the Earth and the Sun. It should not be cutting through the Sun like this. Um, so is that something to worry about? And we're looking for the point where the sun and the moon are, um, you know, we could connect the centers and we're looking for where the, the sun and the moon are um, of exactly the same angular width. And, and I am concerned now. 
because this line looks like it should be closer to being like that. And these things are lined up, right? These things, the center to center line, they're both at zero. Uh, zero, zero, zero. They're all, all three of them have the y value zero. So, um, no, because we're looking for solar eclipses where the moon eclipses the, the earth. For a lunar eclipse, you're correct. It would be the other way around. For a lunar eclipse, it would be the Earth eclipsing the moon. But here we want the uh, we want uh, somewhere on Earth the moon is going to block the sun. Um, and wow. It's possible that this doesn't actually matter because hmm. Yeah, I'm unhappy now. So this might be a lot tougher than I thought it was. I don't think it's that much tougher, really. Um, but it has broken my theory that this line is going to be tangent to both of these, uh, both of these circles. Uh, let's see. In line from the moon to the... I do, I do. I need this line from the to the moon to the earth like this. And you continue this line from the moon to the earth like this. Um, I'm just thinking what the next step is going to be because we'll have the umbral co the umbral cone will like stop there. Let's see. If you want to get the lunar eclipse, if you want to get the solar eclipse, you mean yes. Um, the problem, um, the thing I'm worried about is why is this line cutting off uh, this part of the sun? Is that um, is that normal? Is that something I should be worried about? Is that something I'm just doing something wrong there? Because I thought this line would be tangent to both the sun and the moon. Although I'm beginning to realize that might not actually be possible. Um, so let's see, so, and I'm, I'm trying to think of some other stuff at the same time, so I'm trying to also, um, I'm trying to also at the same time kind of uniformize this stuff. I think the line you're drawing is nonsense for what you're trying to do. Okay, I think you're right. You know, I, th I actually do think you're right. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, SX, SY, SR. So the sun will be at 0, 0 with a radius of 0 0.05. Um, the moon will be at um, 0 0.10 with a radius of 5. I think you're correct. I think I, I'm drawing the line. It's not the way I should be drawing the line at all. Uh, and the Earth. So let's go ahead and do that. I think you're right. I think the line I'm drawing is not the one I need. I was trying to be too clever with it. E X E Y E R equals um, 0 0.15 0 and this is 0 0.025. So now we're going to say yellow disk S. And the reason is if I want to move these things around, I want to be have it a little bit easier on myself to do that. S R red, the disk will be at mx, my radius of mr, and the um, earth will be at ex, ey, er, and we're going to get rid of this line because I don't think this is the line we need at all. So now we want to say is line of t, um, uh, let's see, no, that's not the right thing. Playground.mathics. The line of T is going to be 1 minus T times um, sex SY plus T times next MY. Um, I'm feeling better about this now. 
And so then with the line we want is going to be, this is going to be the central line. And it's going to go from line 0 to line 1. And if this works, I'm going to go ahead and save it real quick. Let's see. Yep, I think you're correct. So now let's see what this does. Oh, my earth just got really tiny, so I'll make my earth bigger. But this is the central line. And let me make my earth bigger real quick. Um, okay, um, this is my center line. Now somewhere on this line, there will be a point uh, where the two will have equal angular radius. And uh, the way to find that is, and I think we, we figured it out last time, was SR plus um, T val is going to be SR over SR minus MR. And then, just to make it look cool, we'll do the line from line 1 to line TVAL. And that should draw the line to where the, where the, um, where the focus, where it's, where it's going to be 0. Okay, so right there, at that point, presumably, uh, the angular radius between the two is going to be the same. So from here, I should be able to draw, oh, in the angle, I can work that out too, can't I? Um, if I make the moon bigger, that line will go further out, and it'll be easier to see. So let's make the moon a little bit bigger. None of this is to scale anyway. Let's do this. Okay, cool. And now the, the focus is going to hit inside the Earth, which for right now is okay. Okay, so from here, we can now figure out the angle that I need to draw this line at, such that it touches... Yes, you're right. It doesn't have to touch the top of the sun. It just has to touch some point on the sun. Uh, yes, yes, I see it now. You're right. Okay, so now the angle... More space between the moon and the sun. Yes, that would be... Could do that. Um... Yes, I could do that. Um, for right now, I think I might be okay here. That might be... We can always move it later. So everything I'm doing is calculated based on the values of the sun, moon, and earth. So, for, okay, so now we know that this is the point where the two things have equal angular diameter. And we can figure out that angular diameter um, by... Let's see, so the um, angular diameter there will be, um, so the angle here is going to be basically, hmm, am I correct in saying it's going to be half the moon's radius, um, going to be the, I mean, we're, we're really in three dimensions here, pretending that we're in two dimensions. But this angle here is going to be basically, um, I, I think the problem I, I, was, I was having before is going to come back, but maybe not. Okay, so from here we know the angular diameter of the two things is equal and the angular diameter is going to be the distance from here to the center of the object. Yeah, right, right. The tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be the arctan, the arctangent of the moon's radius over 2. Um, Opposite, and the adjacent is going to be the distance between the. Um, oh, you know what? We should actually we should actually say cone point equals line T val. So that's going to be a little bit easier for us. So norm of um, cone point minus. Um, minus the moon, which is mxmy. So 
I think that is correct. Um, let me make sure. So the angle I'm looking for is this angle here, which is going to be uh, this divided by this. That is from this the, this distance and um, and the r half radius of the moon. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so now I want to see what this actually is. Uh, 0 0.17, okay. So now I need to draw a line that starts here and goes up at an angular, um, goes up at this angular radian thing of the blob. So that, I think that's actually doable. Um, Okay. Center to center until you come to a point where their two angular diameters are exactly equal, so it's an annular eclipse, as we would say. Um, hmm. All right. So that's going to be, so, okay, I'll call this the view line at T is going to equal, so we're going to start at the cone point and then it's going to be T times, um, so let's see, so every time you go rise over run is the tangent so if you're if you're um, I think And the only thing I'm worried about is this is they've got a minus sign here that I need. Okay. So I think this is going to be correct. This is the view line which starts at cone point, goes left and up by the angle. So if this is correct, go ahead and keep it in black. Um, now view line zero is going to be just the cone point, which is fine. Uh, view line one is going to be just something really weird right now. Uh, but I just want to make sure it's in the right sort of direction. That's what this does. Okay, it's way too big, but... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and shrink that down a lot. But let's see if it's doing the right thing. Now it's too small, and again, right now we're just testing around a little bit. That does not look correct, because at the very least it should go through the top of this. So what am I doing wrong here? Angle rise. So when the rise is minus, w the run is minus one the rise is going to be the tangent of the angle, right? Because it's opposite over adjacent equals tan, so opposite should be... Y you know what, I think... Oh, I know what's wrong. It's, it's, I said moon radius over 2. I meant moon diameter over 2, which is the moon's radius. So this is what I meant. Okay, that... I mean, this does go through this point, but am I am I doing something dumb here? Is this um, I 
Okay, so maybe this is correct. Yeah, that does seem close. And that is, um, and the, the and it, see, I chose it so that it goes through the, through the, um, this line, the perpendicular to this line, which is going here. I'm now wondering if I should have chose it so it goes through the biggest part here, which might be different. And if it is different, that's a hard calculation because I didn't, I didn't anticipate for that. I didn't anticipate for where this uh, line would just be tangent to this and then ideally tangent to this as well. Um, because I assume the angular diameter would be, you know, would be this over the, the tangent opposite over adjacent. Um, it never occurred to me that a part of the planet... Uh, okay, here's what I'm going to say. Because, I mean, we're going this way off scale, but I think that if we do this to scale, um, it would turn out this distance would be too small to care about. Because this is a very small distance compared to the 93 million miles that the Earth is away from the Sun, and even the 300,000 or whatever miles the Moon is away from the Earth. So I think this is actually going to be okay. And then we're going to have another line like this. So th this is the umbral angle right here. And now the issue is going to be, let's see. It doesn't need to be, it, well, um, see, we're trying to find the point here where the angular width of this and the angular width of this exactly the same. In other words, you have a perfect eclipse of this by this. Um, sorry, of this by this. In other words, the two circles line up perfectly in three dimensions. Um, and if they were flat surfaces, this would be fine. The problem is because they're spheres, they're apparent, or circles in this case, but spheres in real life, uh, there's a sort of a bulge that you don't see the whole sphere, you just see part of the sphere. But I think because of the distances, we can ignore that and pretend like these are indeed, uh, this is indeed touching, you know, this is the angular view, it's going to touch this as well. Uh, and then we'll get the other one over here. And then we're going to say, um, let me draw the center of the Earth real quick. Um, I wonder if I can do that just as point. I mean, that shouldn't work because points have no... Um, oh, but it did work. Okay, so let me go ahead and draw that. And... Um, And if I'm, if I'm actually clever here, I can make it so, well, let's see. I'm pretty sure that this line's also gonna kind of slice the sun a little bit. And if it does, I think my original calculation was correct. Um, so let's see if we can make this one five and see what happens. Yeah, and I don't think that's an issue, actually. So... Yeah, yeah, I think we're fine. Actually, I think we know this line's necessarily going to go through top of the sun and the bottom of the sun. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I, I'm pretty sure this is correct now. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and make line T a little bit smarter than that. It's going to be cone point. Um, actually, it can be... Cone point one minus t times cone point, so at t equals zero, it is cone point plus t times um, s x s y. So at one, it should be hit the sun exactly. If this works, like I said, I actually said I was going to do this before and I didn't. Um, screwed that up. <laughs> view line one is going to be SX. That should have worked. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, that's going to be to the center of the sun, which is not what I want. Uh, it's going to be to the top of the sun. The, um, the top of the sun being SY plus SR. Okay, 
and despite the fact that it looks really hideous, I'm pretty sure th that's the correct line. So this is the umbral cone. I'm going to draw the other half of it in just a second. Let me go ahead and uh, save this to Git. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So now we're going to do the other one, which is um, which I guess we're going to call view line two. It's going to be almost the same, except it's going to go to the bottom of the sun. And then we can draw that in too. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. So we'll do this here, line, view line 2, 0, to view line 2, 1. Okay, and now, this is actually, we, we now start asking our question. Fantastic. So this is the cone here, the umbral cone, it has a point here. And so now the question is, in this case, the umbra hits a portion of the Earth. Uh, the sorry, the umbral, the umbral. Um, so in this case, we have an eclipse because right here in this part of the Earth, and uh, so the problem is that let's see, the umbral cone. Yeah. So the uh, so the. Um, So now let me come up with a situation where the Earth is not aligned. The point is the tip of the cone. No, um, let me show you. The total eclipse will occur on this little arc here on the surface of the Earth. Because that is, th th in, on those points, the moon fully obscures the sun. The partial eclipse, which we haven't drawn in, um, we haven't drawn that in, and we don't care about that for what we're doing. So the total eclipse would be right there. I mean, at some point we would probably care, but uh, this tip of this cone is inside the center of the Earth. So partial eclipse here. So now that's way too far to the south, to the, yeah. So I'm trying to deal with the other situation here we're going to have, which is probably the one I was thinking about earlier. Yeah, see so here, this part of the Earth will have a total eclipse. Because from anywhere here, the sun is, um, the sun is, uh, let's see, hang on. The, s the moon is fully eclipsing the sun. Um, but the, the problem here is, um, okay, let's see. Okay, actually, I think this is actually okay. Um, so we still have the case where the umbral cone is actually inside the planet. Um, and if that happens, we know there's an eclipse. We don't know how big the eclipse is, though. Uh... And the case I was considering was where the, um, oh, so the umbral tip is still inside the planet. Can we have it so the umbral tip is outside the planet, but we still have an, an eclipse? Okay. Because the thing you wanted to measure was this angle with this angle. And see if it was, um, oh, actually, hang on. Yeah, it's, I think if we, if you're in, if the umbral, if the cone tip is inside of the planet, we can't do the math we want, which is we want to basically say, um, we know how wide the, uh, the umbral cone is, how many angle, what the angle degree is. So the question is, um, does it touch the planet at any point? Um, um, but I think,
Okay. Um. So I think the situation I was concerned with is where the umbral tip Uh, is outside the uh, is outside the planet, but the cone still managed to hit the planet. And I think in order to do that, I'm going to need to make the sun a little bit smaller. Maybe quite a bit smaller. Yeah. See, this is the situation where the umbral the umbral tip is outside the planet, but we still managed to hit the. Um, this portion of the planet here, all of this here, is going to be in an, in an eclipse. That's a very specific, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I'm trying to figure out. So this is the situation I was looking at, which is basically here we want to say, um, what's the angle between the umbral tip and the center? And then what's the additional angle we get because the planet has a radius? Um, both at the center, and then we have um, the planet's radius add some d dimension to it. So, so this is the. I think these are our two cases. Well, there might be more than two cases. Uh, let's see. Um, So we can confidently say that if the umbral tip is inside of the planet, we will definitely have uh, a solar an eclipse somewhere on the planet. Uh, but we don't know if it's a we don't know if it's the whole planet's obscured or just part of it is obscured. Uh, and there should be a way to tell that. Uh, you considered the space. Well, that's you mean like the coordinates, the x y z coordinates. Yeah, that's that was going to be my earlier approach, and that's going to be harder. Um, um, because then what you're going to be asking is, uh, for the points in the cone, you need a formula to say what are the, how do you define a point inside of a cone? And there's a way to do it, but it's not easy. It basically uh, requires that you look at the um, you take this vector here, you look at the perpendicular plane to it, and you draw a circle inside it of the given, uh, of the given radius to touch the edges of these lines. Um, and that tells you if you're within that circle, uh, you're within the cone. And then you have to ask, when are you within, uh, when are you within a planet's distance? It means you're less than r away from its center, distance-wise. Um, that is harder. That's not necessarily impossible, but that is more difficult, I think. Um, and I still think we can get away with doing it with angles. So in this case, what we'd like to know is um, you know, this angle, and then we know that um, the angular width from there Well, I mean, it's not impossible. We, we need to do something with it. But yeah, basically, um, from, see, from this vantage point, um, what we want to know is, because clearly the center here is not within the cone. Um, but because the planet has an actual radius, it's quite possible that even though the cent this angle, the, um, that angle there, Maybe I should draw. Um, that angle is too big, but I can subtract off from that angle. Um, yes, that's what's really complicated, though. So from this angle is too big because it's too far away from the center. So we need to say what's the closest. Um, you know, what's the what's the angle between this? 
uh, and a point that's within our within points that are within our distance of this. And and then we need to still consider the case where it is inside where the the point is actually inside of the Earth. Um, because it looks like that's a special case as well. So I'm actually tempted to do it the uh, the hard way, uh, to you know to basically say that um, you're inside the cone if you're you know if you're the difference in the y level. Okay. between the y and the vector. Okay, now remember, uh, we're simplifying this diagram here. In real life, what's going to happen is this is going to be a three-dimensional point. Um, these, this is going to be a cone, not three straight lines. And this could actually be behind or in front of the, um, of the screen. Um, so this is not a perfect sort of analogy of three dimensions. And the y of the, it's greater than Earth height than not touching. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so from the center of the Earth, we look at the distance to this, um, line the y distance to this line i think so i think i think i see where we're going with this and you're basically saying if we take a look at this line and look at its distance from the center of the earth um then if it's if if it's less than r if some point in this line is less than r we have a partial eclipse um so the y di this would be the y distance here um, only the Y. Not the, just only the Y, okay. And then keep in mind, these coordinates are not going to be X, Y, and Z. This is a whole cone here. Only the Y level. Um, so when the Y value of this starts out here, it ends up here. Um, oh, and you're saying look at the maximum Y value of Earth and see if it gets touched. I don't know. I don't see it necessarily. Oh, okay. The problem is all of this is going to be in three dimensions. We're not going to have it flat on like, when it's not going to be a Y level, it's going to be, um, it's going to be something weird. Uh, um, I can measure distances and angles I can't measure like a specific coordinate because those coordinates will be twisted around by the time we get into three dimensions. They won't be X, Y, and Z anymore because we're just pretending now that the X axis is aligned so that the sun moon, so the line goes through the, uh, you know, the X axis. Uh, in reality that we can force that to happen, but we'll need a linear transformation to do that. So I don't think that's going to work in three dimensions. Um, I do think that we're very close to something here though. Um, Let's see. We know the coronal point, and we need to know the. Um, so, if we the coronal point, the coronal lines rather, uh, either one of them gets within radius. Oh, I see. We could look at the shortest distance between the line and the center. That might work. Um, and that would actually give us a pretty good idea of how much of the planet is being eclipsed. Um, hmm. For the eclipse to take place the way you want, in some way the center of the cone needs to touch the Earth. No, because in this example, the center of the cone does not touch the Earth, but we still have an eclipse over here. All of this portion of the Earth the surface of the Earth here is still eclipsed. This is a partial eclipse of of the Earth. So this would be um, these places here would see a total eclipse. If you're watching from the Moon, you would see a partial eclipse of the Earth by the Moon. 
the line of the center. You mean this thing here? Um, no. I could move the Earth a little bit further down so that this line doesn't touch it, but this other line, I mean, do, you mean the, do you mean the center line or one of the two, uh, one of the two angular lines? The line of the center, no. Because if I moved Earth a little bit down, and so the top is over here, it's possible that the line of the center doesn't touch anywhere on the Earth, but there's still a portion of the Earth that's fully eclipsed. Um, so anything that's within this sort of cone here um, is eclipsed. And of course, I mean, if there were observers underneath the Earth, like over here, they would also see an eclipse. Well, we generally assume our observers on the surface of the Earth. So they will see an eclipse here. Not, what would be nice to do is measure this angle to see what portion of the Earth is eclipsed. Um, and I don't know if that's trivial because... Hmm. So in three dimensions, that would be when the distance from this line to the center is exactly R. That would be the touching point. Um, this were inside it would still be where it's R. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't see an easy way of doing this, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, your idea is great if we can go from, like, for this situation, it's actually great because we can say, uh, we know what the... Um, we can measure this angle, the angle from the purple line to here. That's too big, but that's okay because we know that we're allowed to go R in. So we can say, well, what's the angular width of this, the Earth as viewed from this point? And that would be, um, so this would be the distance to the center of the Earth. Um, the Earth's radius. Yeah, then we would just have this be the arctangent of radius over this. So in this situation, we're fine. Um, we can say, well, the, this angle doesn't quite make it, but if you add R to it, then yes, the angle, the, the angle is, is big and the angle does touch it. So we would basically say this angle, subtract off this angle, and we have, we have a touching condition where the, um, where the, earth's, where the, the uh, cone goes past the Earth. Unfortunately, because of the way eclipses work on our, pl on our planet, uh, the, um, this, in real life, if we were looking at a solar eclipse, this cone actually never can go past the center of the Earth. It's too small. It's always going to come in and be like over here or over here. It's going to be somewhere uh, inside, well, it could still be outside the Earth, but it's not going to make, because it could be like over here, um, but it's, it's never going to be past the center of the Earth. Um, that's just because of the way that that's just because of the very specifics of the moon, sun, and the Earth. Now, if it was the Earth eclipsing the moon, um, then it would be um, then this this um, this thing might this diagram might work better because then I think the uh, the uh, umbral cone goes beyond the center of the moon, maybe even beyond the entire moon itself. Um, but I definitely see that there are multiple possibilities here. And I'm kind of wondering, um, kind of wondering if there's a way to do it just by sort of saying, uh, let's see. I mean, we can ask where this line first and last, well, it's not really a line, it's a cone. First and last touches the Earth. Uh, And if it's over here, it would still, if it's over here, one of these lines would still touch the Earth. Okay. Unfortunately, I, I, so I've been streaming for an hour and 45 minutes, which is actually long. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and call the stream for tonight. Um, I don't think this is a difficult problem, but I do think we cannot, we can't look at it just with angles. I think we're actually going to have to go uh, into 3D, uh, and look at, uh, we're going to have to look at coordinates. We're going to have to look at XYZ space coordinates. We're going to have to ask, um, we're going to have to find the perpendicular to this, 
vector, the plane that's perpendicular to this vector at each value of the line. Um, and then, uh, then look at the circle in there. And then we'll come up with a fairly complex inequality to say whether or not you're uh, within the cone. And then all we have to do is say, uh, can you be both within the center of the, I within the cone and also on the surface of, of, you know, within our distance of the center of this. And that is the, um, that's sort of the normal way to do sphere cone intersections. And I was hoping we'd found a shortcut. And maybe we have, but it doesn't look like it. So bye for now and talk later.